While 2019 was undeniably the year of Jorge Masvidal, 2020 reigned in with the triumphant return of MMA superstar Conor McGregor. After over a year away from the octagon, McGregor made his glorious return in an electrifying performance against UFC legend Donald Cowboy Cerrone, dismantling the well-respected fan favorite in a mere 40 seconds. Much was made of the decision to have the fight at welterweight instead of McGregor's customary lightweight, with some speculating that the lack of a weight cut would benefit Cerrone more than McGregor due to Cerrone's slight size advantage. When questioned about it, McGregor stated that he felt comfortable at 170 and not having to cut weight was beneficial for both him and his opponent. It opened the door to speculation as to what Connor's plans are in the welterweight division, with potential matchups against longtime rival Nate Diaz, champion Kamaru Usman, loudmouth top contender Colby Covington, or the stone cold soundbite king Jorge Masvidal. It's been a fantasy matchup in the works for quite some time now as Masvidal's stock in the company has skyrocketed. It's certainly one of the most lucrative fights the UFC matchmakers could arrange, with Connor having formerly expressed interest in claiming the BMF belt that Masvidal won against Nate Diaz at UFC 244 last November. Before his return, there was a lot of skepticism as to whether Connor could handle a fight against a larger Masvidal, despite Jorge being a former lightweight contender. Even UFC President Dana White said that Masvidal was just too big for Conor. This attitude was especially common after how handily Masvidal took apart Nate Diaz, who has a submission victory and a tough loss decision against McGregor. However, after Conor's performance against Cerrone at 246, talks of the matchup were back on the table. Not only did Conor come into that fight bigger and in better shape than we had ever seen him before, but Masvidal also seemed to intimate an invitation for a callout wearing the same Versace robe that McGregor had donned in the lead-up to his boxing debut against Floyd Mayweather Jr. back in 2017. McGregor didn't bite at the chance, though, taking Masvidal's dismissive approach and turning it against him. When previously questioned about McGregor, Masvidal would brush it off and say that he doesn't fight retired guys, pointing out that even the boss said, I'm too much man for that individual. McGregor returned the favor in kind, mocking Masvidal's fashion choice in the post-fight press conference, saying that the old ladies in Ireland wear house coats when they're watching soap operas. It wasn't a good night for Jorge, if you ask me. Regardless of whether or not the fight comes to fruition, there's a little doubt that it would be one of the most electrifying moments in the sport of MMA and the history of the UFC. McGregor remains an international superstar, and Masvidal's popularity has never been higher. So this is absolutely a fight that could be on the horizon. What could we hope to expect from a McGregor-Masvidal showdown? Well, both men share a similar distaste for grappling. In fact, both men utilize similar insults and disdain for fighters with a wrestle-heavy style, calling practitioners of this particular approach to fighting crotch sniffers. It's fair to say that both men are more inclined to want to stay on the feet and bang it out, which would undoubtedly lead to fireworks. Many would say that standing with McGregor, while not necessarily a fatal mistake, wouldn't be the wisest course of action for Jorge. Masvidal's grappling is some of the best in the business, with the consensus best submission artist on the UFC roster, Brazilian Demian Maia, claiming that Masvidal's grappling is the best he's faced in an MMA competition. Since all four of McGregor's losses have come via submission, invariably there will be calls from fans and analysts for Masvidal to take the fight to the ground and finish the Irishman there. Be that as it may, the most likely outcome for this matchup would be an all-out war of chess between two extremely seasoned strikers. Both fighters come equipped with some of the highest fight IQ in the game, being exceptional boxers who implement kicks to brutal effect. Masvidal and McGregor are men who go into the cage with dangerous intentions, always looking for the KO finish. Many analysts would say that the Notorious will have the advantage in the counter-striking department but Masvidal's size, strength, and durability might be too difficult to overcome. Masvidal has already KO'd a fighter with somewhat similar style to McGregor's in Darren Till, another lengthy southpaw striker. However, Conor brings superior fight IQ, speed, precision, and a greater variety of weapons to the table than the young Till. Clinch work and counter pressure would be the key to a Masvidal victory as McGregor has shown difficulty against fighters who back him up against the cage. For Connor, the keys to victory would include being patient and not falling into the grappling range of gamebred, sitting back on his shots and utilizing his masterclass counterpunching. 
McGregor has an astounding 19 KO TKO victories in MMA, accounting for 86% of his victories. He also holds the current UFC record for the highest knockdown rate, averaging over one knockdown per fight. However, Masvidal has only been stopped via TKO once in his career, and that was all the way back in June 2008 in a Japanese fight promotion. While many fighters have fallen prey to McGregor's mighty left, he has shown vulnerability against fighters who are able to withstand his striking, most notably Iron Chin Nate Diaz and Russian Mahler Khabib Nurmagomedov. Till, who is much larger than both McGregor and Masvidal, was able to land shots against Jorge in the first round of their match before making the necessary adjustments to knock the Englishman out cold in the second round. It's not unreasonable to assume Connor will land shots as he has landed against every opponent he's ever faced. The real question then comes down to how Masvidal would react to those shots. If he can walk through them, it'd be a long and unpleasant night for the Whiskey Tycoon. However, McGregor's power is the stuff of legend, and he's just coming off a TKO victory against Cerrone, a fighter known for being amongst the toughest in the sport. All in all, it'd be an amazing matchup and a supreme victory for MMA and UFC fans around the world. Both fighters come with larger-than-life personas, equipped with wit and style. There's little doubt that the build-up of the fight and media press conferences would be almost as electrifying as the fight itself. Street Jesus vs. The Notorious would be undoubtedly one of the biggest spectacles, not just in combat sports, but in sports in general. The hooligans from Crumlin in Dublin would be pitted against the goon squads of Miami. At least one belt for the title of BMF in the UFC would be on the line, with the potential for the welterweight strap being involved as well. There's just no going wrong with setting up this match. Hopefully this is a fight that will happen at some point in 2020. If you liked this video, be sure to drop a like and hit subscribe for more videos on MMA and pop culture. Whom do you think will win?